Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. I am Joseph F. Alsis, Addiction Master on all social media. Today I'm going to be talking about Alien. This is one of my favorite movies ever. It's Alien from 1979, which spawned a huge franchise. I'll get to that in a little bit. But first, my love for the movie has no bounds. Uh, it holds up now. It stands the test of time, in my opinion. This is a movie I would objectively say is a great movie. Recommended to everybody. Sci-fi, suspense, horror. It's got everything, and it does everything right. From the cinematography and the claustrophobic car it is to the real-life-looking spaceship, which is like a refinery, a factory. It's called the Nostromo. This movie is amazing. It's directed by Ridley Scott and written by Dan O'Bannon. And it's so much behind-the-scenes stuff. It stars Tom Skerritt, Sigourney Weaver, Veronica Cartwright, Harry Dean Stanton, John Hurt, Ian Holm, and Yafet Kodo. We can get into the producers and all that shit, but this movie will always hold a special place in my heart from seeing it at eight years old. Also, I talk about in a lot of my movies the impact of when you saw a movie, when it was you know, presented to you in what way. It was always like, oh, are we going to bring the kids to see this movie or that movie? And you felt... Um, it was a weird feeling. I'm going to see horror movies Friday the 13th when I was younger and just Evil Dead and just so many things that make the experience even greater. And you add to that an outstanding movie. This is um, a classic that'll always be up there in the top movies ever. It's the Jaws of um, you know space. And as a matter of fact, uh, I think one of the stories is Dan O'Bannon was pushing it as that, as Jaws in Space. And getting into the plot, this movie is so old. It's a spaceship, tug, whatever they call it. It's a commercial vehicle, the Nostromo. It's got um, a seven-man crew, and they mine things and come back. But they get a signal, a distress signal, and it has to be investigated according to their policy. And... These seven people have to detour from going home back to Earth and investigate the signal. And that leads into the plot of the movie, the main plot, which is encountering an alien and not knowing exactly what they're up against at first, and then it turning into one of the best suspense horror movies ever. Oops, sorry. This might be a little difficult. I'm watching my brother's dog. So he's going to be jumping around and doing things, but we'll see. As I was saying, the movie is centered around seven people on a commercial tug going to return to Earth. They go into a d distress signal, and you find out there's a little um, subterfuge going on. There's uh, a plot within a plot that gets so that gets revealed eventually. But you don't know it right away. It's just, oh, we're going to investigate. We found something. One of our team members gets a creature stuck to his helmet. And it looks like a starfish type creature. And by the way, all the behind the scenes stuff for this is amazing. From the books, from O'Bannon's story. Um, Brandywine is the like company that produced it. To getting Geiger to do the special effects. You know, they're trying to use, um, it, there was so many things going on behind the scenes about what the creatures would look like and what their, you know, habitat would look like and things like that. And they start, they settled on H.R. Geiger and then gave Ron Cobb, um, the more human setting type stuff. And it worked beautifully. Now, H.R. Geiger is a weird one in itself, but that's another story, maybe another podcast. So this creature gets stuck to his face and, oh, so the helmet, but you realize it's his face. So when they cut the helmet away, they're like, oh, so they got to do a test and see what's going on. And then miraculously, he, the creature falls off and he wakes up and everything is seemingly fine. They're going to go back home. But one of the greatest scenes in cinematic history happens. And this is 
feels weird giving away a spoiler on a movie that's like, you know, 40 years old. Oh, what are we talking, you know, just insane. But you find out that the creature put a embryo of sorts into the crewman's mouth into his throat. So when the creature falls off, he thinks he's okay, starts choking at the dinner table because they're all going to have a dinner before they go back into suspended animation and get home. It's the best scene maybe ever. And Veronica Cartwright is just amazing in this scene. Her horror is true because one of the behind the scenes thing is they didn't exactly tell the crew everything. So the guy's on the table, he's writhing, and they knew this creature was going to burst out his chest. But a creature bursts out and huge fountains of blood spray all over. And it, it, it gives me chills thinking about it. Like, such a moment. And to be a child in a movie theater, being allowed to be taken to the movie to see it. And there's, like, parent arguments going on. Like, can he see this movie? It adds to a priceless moment in my life. And I would like to even detach myself and say, if I watched the movie yesterday at 50 years old i would still recognize its greatness its um ability to keep you in suspense and hold your attention and build up this fright this terror of a creature you don't get to see much and you don't know exactly what's going on it's um hitting on a theme i didn't recognize as a kid and growing up it was fascinating and as i said it spawned a franchise that is beloved and I personally like all the movies. Yeah, I, I'm not going to be able to critically say the third one was a good movie. It's clunky and it's disjointed. It's got two different directors kind of feel, which if you go to behind the scenes on that, that's a nightmare to begin with. So this crew has to deal with a creature that burst out of his their crewman's chest, killing him. It gets away. And it grows at a rapid rate into this human-sized creature. And there's so much lore behind what it is. Now, in the climax, uh, leading up to the climax of the movie, this is done expertly. The suspense, the terror, the real-life interactions between the characters and how they um, can persistently get on each other's nerves. And it was another behind-the-scenes thing where there are interactions where they were told to get angry at each other. Like, it was fostered in this environment, and it works so well. I hope this isn't like, you know, I'm missing behind-the-scenes stuff where like people were like really treated badly, but I don't think that's one of these. This is just one of those, um, a director knowing how to get what he needs from his cast. Interactions, the chemistry, spot-on, nails it everywhere. This creature is running loose. One by one, it's picking them off. And Sigourney Weaver's breakthrough moment, breakthrough career moment in this movie. How amazing an actress she is, even throughout her career. And it, it really kind of starts here. So it's a milestone, another priceless moment in history. Just so captivating. The lead up to the end, her final confrontation, and then perhaps the greatest sequel ever made, and one of my favorite action movies ever, because they both they have like different genres. Like I'm not going to compare this to Jaws in that sense, but I'm not going to compare Alien to Aliens. Aliens Two, which is Part Two, is a gun shooting action thriller. Same concept, and it's so good that the first two movies are um almost unheard of it has such a reputation such a high watermark in this business of filmmaking that it's it's uh it's awe inspiring if you're in that field just to see it happen like that and then the third one i explained but i actually liked the third one but i love the fourth one when she's like fucking turned into one she's like got the blood in her because they i liked it so getting it to the end it's revealed that one of the crew members is a artificial being and it's incredible ian home portrays it great the whole thing is scary and it puts you on edge because you've got this creature running around 
And then it's like revealed that it's somewhat known or the life form is valuable to a military um, aspect of the company. So they're willing to let people die and this android is in on it. Wow, just another layer added to the movie, the complexity. And I don't can't stress that enough. The interactions with the characters, the ship, everything believable. When you look back at like the Millennium Falcon and how, you know, what a, it kind of looks like a genre, but it's got this awesome charisma and this its own character. They had, they did that in this. The Nostromo, every place they go, how they interact with each other as crewmates is just amazing. So Alien from 1979. One of the greatest movies, arguably one of the best movies ever, but it's one of my favorites, hand down, hands down. Alien Part 2, another one of my favorites, and let's not even get into the video games and what breakthroughs they had in that, and all the things combined, this franchise is just, you know, a great thing to behold. I'm not the type of person who likes to think that other iterations ruin the original. So, for instance, if a movie comes out and I love the book, it doesn't ruin the book. If the Hobbit movies come out and they're not as good as the Lord of the Rings, it doesn't ruin the Lord of the Rings for me. In that sense, I am a little weird because I don't, I'll like Green Lantern. I'm not going to say it's a good movie. So, we all have taste in, in that thing. So. The Aliens vs. Predator movies, I like the first one. The second one is weak and not that good, but I really like the first one. And then, uh, comic books. And like I said, the video game industry. Alien is a special case in cinema, video games, comic books. I mean, it goes so deep, the lore... And I am so happy to have been born and living in this age where this is one of those things that I was given the privilege to see as a child. And as I said, um, you know, growing up, it was that was part of the thing. I remember going to see Superman, uh, Superman 2. And they wouldn't let us into the movie theater because I just went with my friend. And we were tiny. I don't know what fucking year it was. Maybe it was fucking original Superman. And we asked someone online to let us get in. I mean, those type of things, those moments, and yeah, going to see Rocky jogging home and box. Well, my grandfather used to box with us and taught me how to box. So that's another special type thing. But these moments that have to do with not just a movie, with everything around it, and it raises everything up and makes things magical. I can separate that and easily say taking all my bias and my uh, attachment to it away alien 1979 is a great movie sci-fi horror at its best the writing the filming everything special effects and knowing how to use it when to use it not overuse it in a day where practical effects were key you had to know what you were doing just so much going for it I cannot recommend this movie enough. I probably never can. It got, it gets such a reaction from me. Even watching it recently, a couple of days ago, just the setting, the mood it puts you in, everything works. Um, it just really boggles the mind how these things come about and. I try to think of how many people work on a movie. It's like hundreds, maybe thousands. I mean, nowadays you see at the end of the movie, it's just never ending credits. But knowing somebody who is interested in these things and he's got this filmmaker desire in him and he does short movies and stuff and helping him out, doing voice work, helping him film. Looking at it on the bigger picture, it's amazing that these movies make it. And I do try to give credit to some indie stuff and things like that. But you're looking at a time where Jaws, Star Wars, 
Indiana Jones, some of the best movies ever made came out. Like, what was the zeitgeist? What was the trend? What was the momentum, the breakthroughs? And you look at it today, and I see these horrible movies, the remakes of Predator was a fucking joke, the Robocop was a joke, horrible fucking movies. And talking about destroying the law, you look at Star Wars. Now, the new Star Wars movies will not impact my love of the original or my general liking of the prequels. However, you've ruined things and you've ruined characters. I don't think Alien can do that. I mean, unless you really bring Sigourney Reaver back and put her in a really embarrassing situation. Uh, it's revealed that she killed Newt and fucking Hicks in that pod and the third one. Like, how far would you have to go to ruin the character and the alien itself now? In the uh, prequel type movies, the alien, uh, Ridley Scott came back to do Prometheus and Covenant. There is that aspect there of ruining the alien lore. So I can understand people maybe familiar with the newest stuff going why would i even bother watching the original you know we find out that this fucking android made them and it was a stupid story they didn't bother keeping uh the flow of the story the way i would like it and i don't think it was done well which i actually like prometheus i think prometheus is actually pretty good the covenant's fucking just a you know popcorn fucking bullshit movie I don't think it ruins it, and I don't think it can ruin the original. This movie's too good for that. It's the performances are too good. The you know the cinematography, everything is so on point. It's hard to keep uh, even bringing it up again. But to stress it to say, Alien in 1979, you know, holy shit, this is the movie that did it for me. This Jaws, probably more than Star Wars for me. I mean. I don't know if I'm more of a horror geek. Maybe I am. Because I think, well, growing up, I read every horror book with my mom. So I think that's where it starts. So I would say that more than like science fiction, which I got into on my own later. So yeah, I would say horrors really gets me in that spot. But again, thinking about the time and these movies come out, the experience, the age I was, adds to this movie's greatness. It's the experience for me, adding everything I explained about the franchise, and I really implore people to look behind the scenes. Uh, I think I did my Exorcist podcast, and one of the best behind the scenes type movie making things is that um, documentary about the Exorcist being made. Holy shit. Same thing with Jaws, and what Steven Spielberg had to go do to get through. Same thing with this movie. Like you wonder how, oh my, how lucky we are. But this came together with these talented people. And that's another thing with the indies. And like I said, the new Predator sucks. I don't think they wanted it to suck. I mean, I don't know. I have an instinct that there's, there was some kind of change that happened. I think writers started getting power somewhere down the line. They became a commodity that was expensive. And you're going to get now the bargain basement writers type thing. And it just seems to be a trend. Man, I don't know. It's an instinct. Or maybe I read it somewhere and I'm just remembering half ass of what it was. But it seems like you're not going to get the type of writer you want for your movie. I mean, look at these Star Wars movies. Phantom Menace, I give a pass to. I enjoy it. It's ruined and made worse by The Last Jedi, which is an abomination. Horrible movie. Shitty premise, shitty everything. And then it's tried to be redeemed by The Rise of Skywalker, which is a fucking bad movie, but okay, they tried. Um, I look at this franchise, and it starts here with Alien, and I don't get that feeling from this. Uh, although we can point to some of the same writers fucking up Prometheus and Alien Covenant. So maybe my idea or my instinct about Something changed with writers that, like, they want the big money now if you're going to get all the, I don't know. I just wonder about the state of movies. But that's not to say that 
more movies are not being made these days. They're great movies. And yes, we had the pandemic. And it kind of fucking ruined the movie industry. But I am totally down to watch B movies. I, my friends laugh at me. I watch everything. I find little gems here and there. And I think that's the love of it. But this is, again, hands down, one of the greatest movies ever. I put it up there with anything. I mean, obviously, you want to compare a genre, fine. You know, I'm not the biggest fan of... uh. Know, Gone with the Wind or what is that Rosebud type fucking movie which I read the scripts and I you know I tried to do it because I learned how to write scripts and did some creative writing stuff all right I think I rambled on enough about this movie Alien 1979 Ridley Scott Sigourney Weaver's breakout performance the cast of characters who come together and have written so well or ad lib so well chemistry everything Tom Skerritt, Veronica Cartwright, Harry Dean Stanton, John Hurt, Ian Holm, Yafet Kodo made a brilliant piece of art. Dan O'Banion's story, read about him and how he was almost sidelined, he was almost cheated out. He might even sue people because of his idea was being passed around and being changed and being used and they were trying to cut him out. It's Again, it's so special that this movie was made again i totally recommend alien from 1979 it still holds up it still has its value as a learning experience as a filmmaker from everything from the writing and filming and story the tempo the pacing spot on watch it that's an order i hope everybody's doing well be safe my best to you and yours.